Mark, the other part of sort of the trade deal we heard about over the weekend was this currency provision. What is that in your point of view? I don't have a clue, and I don't think anybody else does, except the point I'd, I'd say two things. One is that there are no details announced, and uh, the latest news w over the weekend was that there's still some uh, disagreement about how it's going to be enforced. And so I think, uh, to Catherine's point, yes, there's this uh, euphoria in the market. Uh, but I, I don't know if we really know anything today that we didn't know before the weekend. I think everybody knew there was going to be a delay in the U.S. tariffs. It's been primarily a Chinese and an Asian equity story. Uh, and to, to the point about the uh, rally in emerging market stocks, it's true. But I think that rather than a fundamental story, I think that this is still in reaction to what happened at the end of last year. You know, our NASDAQ is up now every week this year, while the, say, the emerging market is up all but two weeks. So I think at the end of the day, we don't really know anything more about the currencies. Mark, Mark does history tell us anything about a possible deal on, on currency? Have we had bilateral agreements essentially pegging the currency at this point? Let's put aside for a moment the enforcement. But has this happened before? Has it been successful? Well, I don't know if there's been a, uh, a, a trade agreement such as this. But I do think that, you know, we, we do see in the NAFTA, in the new NAFTA mm -hmm. uh, agreement, that there is a clause about currencies. And I think it was really meant to, as a template, as a mm -hmm. pointer, sort of to set precedent with China. And there it just calls for more a transparency about intervention. And of course, uh, the central banks of Canada and Mexico are not your typical interveners in the foreign exchange market. So that's why I think the clause was inserted sort of as a, uh, as a precedent for China. But we still don't know what stability means, whether, and, and over what time period, and whether it's stable against the dollar or stable against the basket. So there, I think there's a lot of uncertainty here, but I wouldn't expect any major agreement for the Chinese to continue to intervene either, either side of the market. Uh, nevertheless, Catherine, are there any uh, emerging market plays that just became more interesting today versus on Friday for you? Yeah, sure. And I'd like to add that the USMCA is a clear example of what has happened in history um, to David's question earlier, uh, Alex, because we got a lot of talk. The markets were very volatile. MXN, the peso was up and down, left, right, center. And a consensus was there would, nothing would come of it. And at the end, something came of it. So I would say that this relationship is so important and incentives are aligned on both ends to come to something. As Mark said, a good friend of mine, he's right. You know, everyone was expecting the delay. Um, and I think it's a good, a good sign that we're working uh, on further concessions. We're in emerging markets right now. Look, I think that Brazil has done very well, and you can continue to see more upside there. I like the MSCI Emerging Markets Index because it has China in it. It has Asia in it. Emerging uh, markets, Alex, remain underheld and undervalued. Mm -hmm. So if you play the basket of EM, which is the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, you're getting a lot of exposure to an asset class that I think is going to outperform developed markets for the entirety of this year. And then to, to that point, Mark, regardless of what you think happens uh, with uh, the dollar UN and what that means for China intervention, can we agree that we're looking at a weaker dollar policy globally? I mean, is that fair to say now going forward, Mark? Uh, I, think I don't hear pushing anything. pushing it a little bit, Alex. I, I think that the, uh, the idea of a stronger, of a weaker dollar policy, I think that's too much to read into this quite yet. And I do think that, uh, generally speaking, the Federal Reserve, you typically want your currency to go the direction of monetary policy. And I'm, I'm not sure that, uh, you know, we've got this agreement now. It, it looks like everybody at the Fed wants to finish the balance sheet reduction this year. Uh, but they're still not really willing to say that they're done with the interest rates. So I think it's a bit early to say we've got a weak dollar policy. 